well with the election now in the rearview mirror. The next question facing investors is whether the Federal Reserve will raise rates. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen was on Capitol Hill this week, and uh, she was asked directly. Uh, and uh, here's what she said. At our meeting earlier this month, the committee judged that the case for an increase in the target range had continued to strengthen and that such an increase could well become appropriate relatively soon. And we're with Jim Chanos this, uh, today. And Jim, it sounds like the Fed's going to raise rates at the next meeting, which is December 14th. You believe so? Well, before I talk about the Fed, I should disclose I sit on a Fed committee uh, of outside uh, uh, investors. That said, which means nothing, um, I, have, I have no idea. I assume they will, um, as the market does. But my views on the Fed are... Uh, are probably uh, worth as much as that hat I Does gave Does it you. matter if they raise? I think it's built, built into the market at this point. I, I think you can assume that wherever the Fed is on its verbal guidance and the so-called dot plots, I mean, that's what's built into the market. And uh, they think they're going to go in December and two more times in 2017. So I would suspect that that is what the market is expecting. And whether they deviate from that because events conspire to change it, we'll see. But that's pretty sure built into the market at this point. You know, Jim, you're a fundamental guy. You make investments primarily on the short side, looking at companies that are significantly overvalued. But I know we've talked about this over the years. You, you do think about the markets and you do think about things top down. Mm -hmm. um, and you always hedge the portfolio by being market neutral. But you've got to have some thoughts about the stock market right now yep. as we're in this period and rates are going up, not just what the Fed is. The biggest, the, to, to, what I found most interesting since the election is what's happened in terms of the bond market. The bond market is predicting significant growth and significant inflation. And what do you see when you look at all of these uh, variables out there now? The bond market certainly pick, it seems to be discounting more activity and or inflation or some combination thereof. Um, again, I'm not so sure. We're not seeing any acceleration yet, so the bond market may be looking a little further afield than the stock market is. Um, there are some issues. I mean, we can have economic growth and it not necessarily accrue to corporate bottom lines, and that's an important distinction. And maybe that's been part of the problem of the last eight years, where Corporate profits have been all-time high, and yet it didn't get to the worker or the voter. And you could certainly see accelerating wage growth, which we're already starting to see a little bit, which benefits, you know, the average guy to the detriment of shareholders. And, and, and so if the Trump election is one of those major, major turning points, uh, as I've said, like 1932 or 1979-80, where we had the advent of big government, um, uh, advent of labor in the, in the 30s after the Depression for 40 years, and then Thatcher and Reagan turned that around in 79-80, and, and capital became ascendant for at least the next 35 years. Wow. Um, if this is a move back to more populism, to more little guy, you know, make, make sure the worker is, is the person that we're legislating for, then you've got to rethink your portfolios because that is a sea change. In the, in the 30s, you didn't want to be anywhere near pa paper assets for the next 40 years. They generally did not do well. Inflation hedges, labor, cash, all did better. In 1979 with Thatcher and 80 with Reagan, it was time to change a life portfolio and buy paper assets, right? And capital was going to be ascendant. Are we at one of those turning points? Because the signs are that things are changing with Brexit, Trump, a variety of rise of nationalist leaders. Um, is, is the man in the street going to be doing better than the man on Wall Street? Mm. It's a good question. It sure is. Let me, so what would you attribute this move in rates? I mean, you're talking about the yield on the 10-year at the highest of 2016. Yeah, but I mean, let's be, be honest. It's what two two thirty years. It's still very it's still low, pretty low, but you're yeah. still talking about from not from zero right. to two and a half right. percent. Right. And and by the way, the ten year now has not gone anywhere for a number of years. Um, it, it's and so um, are we seeing this this once in a generation, if not once in a lifetime, change in sentiment in bond prices? Is it time with rates at zero, bond rates at zero, two percent in the U.S.? I mean, is it time to start thinking about um, going the other way? I'll leave that to the bond guys. Oh, I really wanted your opinion because you know, those, you know the bond guys were all over TV this week saying, and many of them have said it 
in the last year or yeah. in the last two years yeah. that the bond bulk, that the that the bond rally the 30 year bond rally is over that right. the bull market's over you, you you agree with that who knows if they're right in terms of, of immediate timing but the payoff for that that call could be enormous there have been a lot of people making that call for the last six years and they've been uh, dead wrong yeah. yeah dead wrong yeah Wall Street Week continues in a minute